welcome back to my channel i don't really know what direction this video is going to go in today obviously i know the premise and the basis of what i'm going to talk about because girl but as far as how i'm going to relay the message i don't know it's not even a message what the hell am i saying it's a life update and also story many stories you we can call this a series okay and so i just want to thank god for waking me up this morning because you know it's good to be grateful for life <laughs> but realistically he's gonna lead me through this video and tell me or like guide me on what to say and what not to say as per usual you know can't say too much let's jump right on in because there's a lot to cover for starters i had no idea on whether or not i wanted to be doing my makeup while i was filming this video or if i wanted to do my makeup before beforehand and then just stick to the point and get to the point but I feel like this is our most intimate setting when I'm doing my makeup and telling you guys what's going on so let's just do that not really sure what look I'm going for today but it will be pretty there's a lot of layers to this situation so I decided that I'm going to take you guys back to the video titled I don't even know what is titled at this point I gotta check on my phone the video with the blonde wig and the black lipstick okay <laughs> that's what we're going back to the reason we're going back there is because I feel like that is like a really good starting point to kind of kick off what happened right before that and right after that so as many of you know I have told you guys that when God is talking to me he will talk to me in many different ways one of the ways that he warns me about any incoming warfare doom <laughs> um anything that he wants to tell me because you know we're friends of God okay when you're God's friend he will keep you in the loop okay so one of the things that he will do is make a random song play in my spirit and so unless you have experienced this with God you're not going to understand this particular part of the video and that is totally fine the day before I filmed that video a song played in my spirit and when a song plays in my spirit what happens is I was explaining to my mom earlier that it's like in a scary movie if you were in the house by yourself and a record would start playing And that record, it's like the song is playing in the atmosphere. Nobody else can hear it but you, okay? Now, when I say it plays in my spirit, what will happen is I'll just start singing it out of nowhere. Didn't hear it anywhere, didn't listen to it recently, haven't thought about the person or the artist or anything of that nature. And I'll just hear the song playing or it'll come out of my mouth. And when it comes, it starts to come out of my mouth, everything around me stops, okay? Everything around me stops. And so the day before I filmed that video, there was a song playing in my spirit. I was in my bathroom. I think I was about to, I think, witch hazel my face. I had just come either out the shower or I had just washed my face and I reached for the cotton pads and the song started playing. This day in particular, the song was not a song that I would ever think that God would play because it's very secular but god will use anybody right and that's what we know in the bible right that's what we know when we read our word that he will use anybody he will use anything to get his message to whoever he needs to get it to if you're wondering what song played that day it was i don't give a by nipsey hustle yeah so when it happened i'm like what's going on why why am i singing that song but I went about my day. I didn't like think about it for the rest of the day. It happened. I know that when something like that happens, within 24 hours, I'm gonna get an answer. So I kind of just dismissed it because why is that song playing? And so if you know that song, then you know how it goes. Like the hook was playing and it was so strong and pulling me and I'm like, what is going on why is that song being played now if you know how nipsey hustle died he was clearly set up but he was murdered right and so that song is playing that day ends i go about my business if you recall that day so earlier in the day i had been on live and 
I was supposed to go grocery shopping the next day, but then I said, never mind, I'm not going because I shouldn't have said that I was going to go grocery shopping. I was like, not going to go grocery shopping on, I believe it was a Thursday. So the next morning I edit my video and I realize how empty my fridge is. <laughs> and I'm like, I actually can't afford to not go to the grocery store because there's literally not even a hot dog. Like I gotta get to the grocery store. I can't not go to the grocery store that day. Like it was just, it was that bad. Like I needed to go to the grocery store. I couldn't not go cause I'm not a single person. <laughs> well, I'm single, but like I don't, I have three kids. I can't not have a good substantial amount of food in my fridge cause my kids eat like teenage boys. Okay. So I was like, oh shoot. We got to go to the grocery store, mom. And but in the nighttime, and I have a journal entry about it. I was getting this anxiety, like thickness in my house. And I'm like, what is this God? Why is it coming over me so hard like this? And I'm rebuking it. Okay, I am praying the anxiety away about leaving the house. At that time when I was journaling, God made it very clear to me that I would not be going to the grocery store. The anxiety was so strong. I knew that something was wrong, right? And that I wouldn't necessarily make it to the grocery store so i was like okay I'm, we're not gonna go to the grocery store but i'm not gonna tell mom why we're not going we're just not going so what happened was i woke up the next morning and all the anxiety that i felt the night before was gone and so i decided when um the driver picked up the kids for school i was like we can go to the grocery store i told him to spin the block i told him drop them off and then come back for us i think for 10 o'clock and so I went about my day, I started editing a video, and the minute that I finish editing this video, I get the email from my ex on Botox. And so I said, this is what I was feeling last night. This is why, because there's not been a time that my ex pops up and I don't have that thickness in my house. A song doesn't play. I always know when my ex is coming, always. It's annoying because it's like, oh why like i loathe the feeling okay but i'm grateful obviously that i get these warnings and these prompts and they come in many different ways but there's not been a time where where my ex has popped up and i was not warned beforehand with either a dream a song or there's a few other ways that like god will like make something pop up literally pop up on my phone i'll be scrolling and it'll pop up on my phone and i'm like are you kidding me and i know that he's saying he's coming so <laughs> so i had to learn how to kind of not let it make me anxious right so of course he pops up i get the email on botox and i'm talking to my mom and i'm like this everything makes sense now so i decide i'm gonna film this video right initially i was gonna go to the grocery store come back home and film the video but then god had said to me film it now mind you i don't know that i was necessarily supposed to go to the grocery store after the fact that same day because what ended up happening was i filmed the video i edited it and i uploaded it to youtube and it was on unlisted until i returned home from the grocery store okay so based on that this is why i didn't want to do my makeup and tell this tell this story because i'm talking and telling you guys and i'm not doing my makeup <laughs> <laughs> because there's just so much okay so i make her call the driver's supposed to be at my house in literally like 15 minutes and i tell my mom tell him don't come don't come yet because when i was in the shower is when i found out that i need to film first and then go to the grocery store and it's a good thing that i did because i filmed the video edited it uploaded it went to the grocery store by nightfall i was coming down with tonsillitis okay then the minute i got home i was feeling weird and I'm like, what the frig? And you know, tonsillitis and laryngitis, girl, you can't talk. So if I had gone to the grocery store first, I wouldn't have gotten around to filming the video. And then I would have been out of commission for, I think I was gone for like two weeks, a week or two weeks. I can't remember. You guys would know. That video had to come out. And the reason it had to come out was because there was information that I needed to be privy to. And I wouldn't be privy to that information had I not posted that video. And so God works in very mysterious ways. And so this is what happened this is what kick-started everything else right post the video and somebody that knows me that lives in Jamaica that has their ear to the street contacted me on YouTube and they tell me that my ex has linked up with people bad people from Kingston so some bad men from Kingston and they're plotting to do something they're plotting to come into my home. Now, my ex is known for home invasions and 
other things. And so did this surprise me? Absolutely not. But um, it was one of the reasons that I left Canada because I felt like that was what was going to be my fate, right? If I stayed in the home because one, I couldn't find another house so that he wouldn't have my address because once I kicked him out, he still knew where I lived. And the anxiety, once I started to expose the things that were happening in my relationship, it was not going over well, right? I was offending people. It became dangerous and, you know, it just wasn't safe. And so, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, I brought that on myself, but it was like, I was so silent for the whole time. I never got to, you know, tell my story. Things didn't add up until I started to speak, right? Because a lot of people always felt like something was off. Like, what, what did she see in him? Like, you know, why does she, why is she with him? They naturally didn't take to him. They didn't like him for whatever reason, right? And so people that could discern, because my discernment obviously was not there when I was younger, right? So people that could discern were like, he ain't it. Whereas I was not able to discern that in the beginning, right? But once I could discern it, it was too late, okay? And so, like I said, no bone in my body was shocked or surprised when this person reached out to me. And initially, they left one comment. They didn't comment on the actual video. They commented on my community tab post to alert me. And when they did that, I just said thanks with a heart. I said thanks with a heart, but then I deleted their comment. But I knew that they would get my notification that I saw it, which is all I want. I wanted them to know that I'm acknowledging their message and to say that I appreciate them for telling me what they're telling me. And so when I did that, they left another comment. And I was like, okay, at this point, I need to investigate myself because what? So once they left the second comment, I'm like, okay, yeah, let me go and let me see what's going on. But I already didn't want anybody to have my number because I've had to change my number a couple times since I moved, right? And so, which is so crazy because in Toronto, like I've had the same number for over a decade. I've never had to change my number. But once I moved to Jamaica, I've had to change my number what, three times. And so only my closest of closest, closest people have it. And nobody's allowed to have it. And the people that have it would never give it out because that's what happened was our circle when we first moved was still too big and we were breached. So we had to sh we had to do some house cleaning, if you will, okay? So nobody was allowed to have our new numbers again. I wasn't going to contact the person myself, so I had somebody else contact them for me and get to the bottom of whatever the hell they were saying. Because when they commented it, I was like, I don't really know what to do with this information. I, I, I Okay, thanks for the heads up. Like, But it actually made things worse for me because though it was good to know that I'm receiving this information or that this information has got to me, I can try to protect myself better, you know, where security is concerned. It, it kind of heightened the anxiety, which was the problem in Canada. My anxiety was on freaking 5,000 in Canada with the ring cameras and the, it was too much, right? And so now I was back in that place where I felt safe for a while and then I didn't feel safe anymore. And I'm like, how is this person that don't live in Jamaica able to still instill fear, some kind of fear in, in me? Obviously I walk with God, so fear is not really supposed to be in my body and so you know if I go back to 2014 it got to a point where I did not care if I were to die or not I didn't care if I was gonna be murdered or not because of the situation that happened with my ex so I started living my life like if I die I die because I can't live in this state of paranoia and so I was back in that place again and I was just feeling like oh my god this is like I feel like I'm on a hamster wheel when this information gets to me I'm like are you kidding me and the Nipsey Hustle song then all of a sudden makes made sense because he was trying to set me up. So I said, okay. And what's funny is I also had a dream around that time, I have it written down, that kind of went along with what the person had said, right? But I didn't put two and two together until after. When I got that warning, I had somebody reach out to them and get the details and I was sent um, a screenshot of, a, sorry, screen recording 
of information that was passed on to the bad people in Kingston, right? The person that gave us the information told us that when they were asked about us, he informed them that they are not allowed to even approach us and he told them that we are his family and to leave us alone. The person that was conducting the freaking um, foolishness was referring to us as a food, right? And so if you know slang terminology, then you know what a food is. And he referred to us as a nice piece of food. And so when I'm hearing this, and I have the voice note. Like the dog girl, I'm me know see you like a... Uh, they go to school and be style. Like the kids, they go to school and style, you see me? So, they go to know the whereabouts. You see me in Canada, they go from. You see me? Canada. You see me? They go to the kids still now. You see me? They go to the kids. So I just... You know, I'm not active. So you're not gonna be able to understand most of what he's saying because it's very muffled but um, he was saying that he wants to that they want to be made active so the, the 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 people that are going to commit this crime right this home invasion getting ready to be active and then there's another voice note. Hold on. Is it me? I say like a three month now. Them dear yard. Is it me? I say like she have a YouTube channel. Is it me? But she now upload nothing on her channel. And re 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 and te te te. Is it me? I just the youth them. I just the baby them like the nigga want to get. Is it me? Willing to do anything for getting baby them. Willing to do anything to get the children. Of course. Of course he is. Cause they come with a big old paycheck. But we'll get into that either in another video or later down the line in this video. The fact of the matter, oh, you didn't hear the food part. Hold on. Yeah. A nice piece of food that said we. A nice piece of food that said we. Oh my Jesus. So imagine this comes across my freaking phone and I'm like, leopard never changes his spots, a tiger never changes his stripes. And so now I'm made aware that this is why my kids would end up in foster care. Well, foster care, there's no foster care, right? But this is why when he sent that email, he was talking about some damn foster care. And this is why Nipsey Hussle was playing because I was about to be set up. That plan could not go because when I got this message, I posted it on my damn Instagram. If anything happens to me, y'all already know what time it is, okay? And I'm like, wow, wow. That was a little crazy around this time because that was way back, that was in what? Oh, look at that. It's 11-11. You can't make this up. We conducted that investigation on June 18th. And so this is before Hurricane Barrel, which came with its other, with a whole other set of things. The person that was telling my source about the situation was telling her that if I wanted to, I could go to the police and get, um, I think a restraining order or something or just alert the police that this is what's going on and blah 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 and that's what they had told me at that time okay now obviously I did not do that I did not go to the police at that time but I'm on high alert I'm I leave my house and now I'm back to being hyper vigilant I'm in the car looking behind me through the freaking bat glass right Make, thinking if cars are following me like I'm leaving my house paranoid. I'm scared to go outside of my house. I won't take my kids on walks anymore. My mom's like, we can't live like this. And I'm like, I know, but I don't want to be caught slipping with the kids. Like what? Oh God, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I cannot. As you can see, that was already a lot. <laughs> but uh, what can a girl do? What can a girl do? How do you handle a situation like this? Like, my life is not real. Like, am I on the Truman Show? Like, is this a joke? Like, are you kidding me? Out of all the possible Prince freaking Charmings that I could have ended up with, this is what, this is what happened? This is, this is what happens when you don't have a prayer life in your early 20s and you are dating. This is what happens. This is what happens when, when you do not consult God about the people that are coming into your life out of nowhere. And it, it, it's happened to me multiple times. Friendships, relationship, whatever. 
tell even my own damn sister but when people just barge into your life and things start to change and get real hectic real fast you know something ain't right not good news for me and now like i said i was on high alert and uncomfortable as far away as i was or am in jamaica and you know i started to feel like you know when the mummy <laughs> you know when the mummy where they took something from the they took the jewel or whatever that was it was like a um a beetle i think it was a beetle they took the beetle from the freaking pyramid and they weren't supposed to and all this craziness started happening that's how i started to feel but i know it's a damn lie <laughs> but like that's how i'm made to feel like took my kids out of a crazy situation and i am being pursued by the literal devil right and so i'm like god where are you at what's happening okay like what's happening can a girl get some assistance clean up on aisle three lord okay <laughs> i'm laughing none of this is funny really i have to laugh if i if i don't laugh girl mother would be crying and we're not crying <sighs> that happened and what's funny about this situation is i recorded this video already way back when i recorded a video that sort of started talking about what I just told you guys and played like, like with that voice note. I don't think in that video I played the voice note, but I did say this happened and it's still on my memory card. I have not edited it, but that happens to me a lot where I'll record a video in like freaking January and for whatever reason, I God's like not time to release yet so that I don't release it. And so I recorded up. There's so many videos on my memory card, you guys, that have not been edited for whatever reason. Like, it's just the timing, like nothing can happen out of God's will. And so it's, I'm, I'm gonna say it's God's will that I'm sat before you today telling you this first part of the story because this week has already been hectic, right? Like if you're a member, then you saw on Wednesday, so yesterday I posted on my community tab and I told you guys about what's happening, you know? And you know, I hoped that I would be in front of my camera today and lo and behold, here I am. My kids started school, so they had orientation and so they don't have school today. And so today is realistically the best day for me to film. The last couple days, I have had to leave my house and I was out of my house for way longer than I was supposed to be each of those days because baby it just it, it just life goes how it goes for me i don't i try not to even bother planning things because they don't pan out girl if you see this video that means that it was god's will if you don't see the video well then it wasn't god's will <laughs> so um i guess now that you know that power just went out so that happened and <laughs> oh my goodness the warfare the warfare my greatest protection is the Lord Jesus Christ so I was like I said I was just back in that position I was in 2014 pray or worry don't do both and so I, I could I don't I don't have time to worry about shoulda coulda wouldas or if my ex is plotting to have me murdered i don't have time to worry about those things right i got kids so i am not going to i, I have to have a poker face where my kids are concerned you know they can't see that i'm worried about things like i think they i can tell when i am overly stressed how my kids pick up on it there's a lot of times my mom has no idea that i am stressing about something because i have such a good poker face where the stuff is concerned i do not allow things that are happening internally to affect my external external life because i'm an empath as well i know what it's like when my energy is drained by somebody else so i keep a lot of the things to myself until god tells me to go and share so my mom can pray or whatever she needs to do right but i try to keep it together because we, we don't have time for the the paranoia and the crazy like it, it's too much but what am i supposed to do right and so because i have the girls you know i I put on a brave face and I go about my day. My kids are not gonna be knowing that I'm freaking out inside that, 
you know my car is being followed they might see me look out the back window but they're also always preoccupied we're driving they're focused on other things so if i decide i'm taking a glance to see what cars are behind me you know or if a car seems like it's following my car then my kids might not n take notice of it but if i'm doing it excessively they're going to mommy what are you looking at right there's been times where they catch me doing things that are not normal per se where um or they know that it's out of my normalcy and so they'll question me and i tell them mind your business <laughs> right i gotta snap out of it or i try to, to to keep it together when i'm around them right because I'm not gonna be like, oh, your dad is plotting to have me murdered, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm just peeking out the back window here to make sure no cars are following. It's like, what the frig? Why would, I can't do that, you know? I can't tell them what's going on. So I have to keep it to myself and, you know, privately at nighttime, I may go and tell my mom or whatever is going on. We strategize, but yeah. So, like I said, that was really what kickstarted this whole thing. Now, in a perfect world, and maybe one where narcissistic abuse and neglect were not the catalyst to the messiest divorce of all time, and maybe in a perfect world, my children could have two parents that could healthily co-parent but unfortunately that is not the case here and unfortunately it'll never be the case obviously my dream would be me and my kids live in jamaica they have a great education system here my kids get to experience this life here safe and happy and I can help them to thrive, and they could have a long distance relationship with their father. That would be the ideal dream. I would not, um, I would not require financial assistance from him. I would not limit their interactions. I would only be requesting peace, right? And so that is the ideal situation for me, right? No pursuing of child support don't want it, don't need it, but they would get to have a relationship with their father. And then as they get older, of course, they would eventually get to interact with him in person. And at that point, they would be bonded via FaceTime to the point where one, they could speak up and they're not so easily manipulated because a, a three, five and six year old are gonna be easy, easily manipulated. If me at 20 was easily manipulated, if the men at his work were easily manipulated into committing crime for him and with him, then how much more would three little girls be manipulated by him? And that's what's scary for me. And so, you know, obviously with the whole narcissism thing, I tried to unsee the abuse, I tried to unsee the narcissism, I tried to unsee what my life has been for the last 12 years. Like, I don't think you guys realize, I didn't try to leave my ex one time. I tried to leave my ex multiple times and was manipulated to stay. And I'm talking even before I had children, right? I tried to leave at many times because it just wasn't right and I was constantly manipulated to stay. When you're in it, you don't necessarily see that. But when I look back, I can see it clearly. Hindsight is always 2020. And so that's kind of what happened there. That would be the ideal situation. Little girls definitely need their mom. I think that little girls need their dad too, but if their dad or mom are not healthy in terms of can they raise another human being, <laughs> um, then we have to consider what is in the best interest of the child. And so it's in their best interest to be with mom and dad have access in terms of speaking because they don't provide anything and are not willing to provide. But the reverse of that would not benefit the children. And so, which would be them living with their father and I would pretty much never see them. That would not benefit them in any way because we have two family dynamics here. We have one family that has a long history of foster care on his side, abuse, drug abuse, all kinds of things on that side, and they have a history of that. Those types of patterns, they generally don't stop. 
right and if you recall they already tried to put my kids in the system in Canada right and what happened CAS called me they knew his mother so they were like we're just giving you a heads up that this person has now called on you because she's called on other folks right so we're just giving you a heads up okay because she has a history with them so they're like yeah we're just calling to give you a heads up blah 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 blah, right so i don't want to get too far off topic where that stuff's concerned because we're going to jump obviously back into those topics when we start talking about court and stuff so um let's fast forward to i guess hurricane barrel yeah Let's fast for forward to the week of July 1st. If you guys watch the vlog, you will see that uh, we had planned this trip to stay at a hotel. My best friend was flying in. We had a week's planned stay at the hotel. And that same time we were at the hotel, Hurricane Barrel decided that she was going to take over the island what you don't see in the vlog is that my ex had been contacting me and this is what i mean by poker face because we went on vacation we kept it business as usual right so i'm literally there on vacation i think it was day two of the vacation and my ex pops up i had actually a few warnings during that vacation that did not make it to the vlog like for instance some videos that went up about me um around that time i had dreams about that prior i had found out about all those things prior god had told me everything prior i literally have it written down and it's dated because it was in my phone to those things happening and so once they manifested I was on vacation I didn't give a damn about anything <laughs> no matter what is gonna happen God keeps me in the loop and it's bittersweet because yes I get to be in the loop but it doesn't take away the sting it does not take away the sting to know that it's gonna happen and watch it manifest but what it does do is allows me to remain grounded when it is happening so does it hurt does it does it suck yes but i knew so i'm grounded and it doesn't really shake me or move me to react okay and that's how i'm able to not react because i know that it's gonna happen those those warnings came via dreams but yeah not only did my ex contact me at that time when we were gone to uh the hotel my ex was actually on the island and had my address and so what is the likelihood that god would move us out of our home for six five or six days whatever we were at the hotel for while my ex is on the island what is the likelihood of that i feel like slim to none <laughs> slim to freaking none that was not by chance that was not that was literally the grace of god like my ex was harassing me while i was on vacation did he show up to my house? I don't know, I don't have security cameras because when I had security cameras in Canada, I was uber paranoid and I said, I'm not putting them up. My mom's like, we need to put them up. I said, no, I'm not putting up cameras because I'm going to be checking them perfusely. So I rather not do that. If I trust God, I trust God, I'm going with God. I don't need security cameras, period. Then I decided <laughs> that I am gonna put them up because things started to get a little strange. But yeah, my ex was harassing me while we were on vacation. He was emailing me. At one point I was laying in the bed and my phone was on the dresser or the nightstand plugged in and my mom's like, your phone is, your phone's um, vibrating. I couldn't hear it because my back was turned. She's like, your phone's vibrating. I pick it up and I see my ex's email across the screen, like trying to FaceTime my cell phone. And I'm like, what in the mother is going on? Like he had already been emailing me. Now he's calling me FaceTime. And then yeah, he was on the island. So I'm like, bruh, there's a whole hurricane. He had even emailed me and was like, where you at? Like hurricane i'll come through i don't care la, 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 la. and i'm like this man is psychotic like leave me alone <laughs> leave me alone it's a hurricane you it's a hurricane 
Like, that's how I know he don't have no sense. You want me to bring the kids out in a hurricane? We're on lockdown, sir. I was so disturbed. But again, poker face, business as usual. I did not engage. Mind you, at that time, he was trying to trick me, which continued he, he, to literally last week. Actually, to literally right before court, um, which was this week, he was trying to scare me and trick me knowing that there was a court date coming up which was so strange to me but not really because everything he does is strange but like oh god have mercy on my soul like i said hurricane barrel happens my ex is on the island has my address knows where i stay at but god moved me to a different parish at that time and i was not home by the time we got back home after the hurricane uh, my ex had already gone back to Canada because that would have been some ish if we were home and this crazy Caucasian man is dead on my doorstep like huh <laughs> how did you get here <laughs> like what no no so God said no no not on my watch shifted us moved us okay we were actually in awe about that situation for a, a hot little minute because we were just like god is so good like what is the likelihood of that i need somebody to tell me in the comment section what is the likelihood that when my ex is in jamaica unannounced that we are not home tell me coincidence i think not okay so yeah that happened and now you guys are only now finding out that that happened but yeah he was on the island and um was contacting me while he was on the island because what he was trying to do which made no sense was trick me into giving him the children but there was the reason for that and it had to do with court the system here generally wherever the kids are that's where they like to keep them see court had been happening from apparently march but i didn't know i missed a bunch of court dates here in jamaica because i had missed a bunch of court dates as I was not served everybody's wondering where is mom at why is mom not showing up to court you know everybody's wondering where I'm at they don't know my side of the story they only know what he has told his lawyer and blah blah blah, blah. so when I'm not showing up to court they're like okay well they're gonna make like judgments against me if I don't show up they kept adjourning but because I wasn't showing up right and so how am I gonna show up if I'm not served they're not gonna just make any regular degular moves when the situation is one international and two it's not adding up nobody gives up everything like nobody just picks up with their three kids and moves to a different country out of the blue so obviously somebody somewhere had a little bit of sense and realized that they made some judgments or whatever but he had this document and he had emailed it to me and was the saying um, this is while I'm on vacation and said to me it was cropped anytime he sends a document He crops it. It's so funny. So he sends this document. I don't even remember what the hell it said, but He was saying that we can wrap this up Before the next court date and yada 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 and I'm just like what is this man talking about? So you guys missed a bunch of things. Um, I have it recorded. The call, my lawyer literally called me as I'm filming this video and was giving me an update because there was court today, but I didn't have to be there because it was for something um, pertaining to the situation, but just, you know, them trying to get a deeper understanding about something. And so I don't want to say too much and let the cat out the bag. They have to figure some things out. So... I don't even know where I was in the freaking story. But the last thing I remember telling you guys before the phone call came in was about Hurricane Barrel and how we were miraculously in a different parish when Hurricane Barrel happened and my ex was in town. You know, fast forward to after that, we were now into July and another song played this time it was foxy brown and baby sham okay so i'm in my mom's room and we're just chopping it up or whatever and so this is like i think i'm pretty sure this is like after i put the kids to sleep and by to sleep i mean put them in their room and told them it's bedtime girl they was not going to sleep that's neither here nor there 
So I'm in her room and a song starts playing in my spirit. And you know, a lot of the times when the songs start playing in my spirit, it's almost like watching That So Raven and she's getting a vision. That's how it is for me, right? And so the song starts playing and I'm like, oh my God, no, what is this? <laughs> so it happens again, because this is not a song that's been used before. Like there's songs that have been used and then there's songs that are like brand new. And I know, uh-uh, no, okay. And so this song in particular was Foxy Brown, Baby Sham. And so all I hear is the day when the tables will turn. Yes, the tables, the tables will turn. Girl, girl. I was, I was like, what is this? That is, that is not, I said, no, 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 no. What is this song? Why is this song playing? I'm gagging. I'm like, uh oh, God. You better get to explain, explain yourself, Lord. <laughs> not me telling the Lord to explain himself. Just kidding. But i'm visibly disturbed and my mom's like she's like what's wrong and I, I just business as usual okay that is the theme of my life business as usual i just keep doing what i'm doing in her room but the truth was inside i'm freaking out okay because i'm like what is what is going on here within 24 hours i got my answer <clears throat> and so that brings me to the next part of this crazy saga child protective services showed up at my crib okay what <laughs> what no nobody and i mean nobody has my phone number so they couldn't call me right she, the girl could not call me to to do her little check so she showed up at my house but she couldn't get in okay she was hanging from outside the club okay so the security is calling trying to reach us and can't reach us for some reason and so we get a call and they're like, a lady from Child Protective Services, Jamaica, is here. And I'm like, excuse me? Mind you, I'm literally sitting on my bed, crying my eyes out, praying, okay? Because I'm just feeling super duper down, okay? You know, familiar feelings that I've had in the past are, are, are trying to rear their ugly little head. And I'm like, praying crying journaling on my bed like god come on where are you like you know and i'm literally sat there praying that jesus is gonna come and sit on my bed and talk to me that's what i was praying like in my heart i was like god like where like please come and talk to me come and talk to me whole time jesus is at the gate <laughs> you guys probably think i'm making this up I, you cannot make this up okay like you cannot make it up so i'm crying on my bed and all of a sudden my mom comes in my room and she tells me that security's been trying to reach us and i'm like okay for what so i get on the phone with security and i'm like what is going on and they tell me you know there's a lady from child protective services i'm heated no beyonce okay heated so they tell me and they ask me if they should let her in i'm like no but i'm guns blazing and I leave the house and I go to the security gate. I said, is she still here? And they said, yeah, it's that car. So I go outside of the gate and I am cussing the girl. I said, why are you here? Okay, I recorded it. I don't know if I'll insert it or not, but I was like, why are you here? What are you doing here? And I'm ready to cuss her the freak out. I start telling her my story as to why I'm here and what the frig is going on. And I don't understand why she's showing up to my house and first of all i'm in jamaica you can't talk to jamaicans no type of way it doesn't matter if they work at kfc or the freaking bank one thing you're not gonna do is talk to a jamaican person crazy at the side of your neck but i certainly was but you know me i'm saved and sanctified so i went out there guns blazing but like it wasn't like you know me with the brick or me with tim hortons and madonna okay it wasn't that bow okay it wasn't the bow that cusses bad words it saved me that went out there just like no what the frig is this okay instead of matching my energy she very calmly started to explain why she was there and you know saying honestly <laughs> i don't really understand because this is out of my jurisdiction and she was saying like she has this file and there was no phone number on the file she said if there was a phone number i would have just called i wouldn't just show up normally but you know i showed up because i thought it was interesting that your address was here but not your phone number so i came and you know 
there was a calmness over me once she started to speak and so it almost felt safe so what i did was say that she could come in and i allowed her to come through the gate and so she drives us back to my house after she signs in and one of the first things she asked me was if i was a christian and i said am i a christian and girl she audibly heard the holy spirit tell her to pray for me and so she did just that god literally sent this woman to my house so she ends up coming she meets my kids she meets my mom she does a, a, an investigation of my house okay and you know tells me what's going on i'm like okay this is the beginning of when i'm really getting the you know like full hundred on what has gone on and the court stuff that my ex was talking about in his little email when we were at the hotel so this lady comes and she does her job and i literally had to apologize to her for coming guns blazing okay that was really the start of it but can you imagine you are minding your black business and child protective services comes to your house and so i'm triggered because remember in canada they tried to do the same bs but in canada they didn't send nobody to my house they called me and told me that the people have called the child protective services and i'm like child protective services y'all know these kids is good child protective services you y'all know these kids are good but they were there because I've been missing court. There started to be orders for my kids to be removed from my care, right? And so obviously this is very serious. Like I can't be missing court if they're, you know, making orders against me like that. At that point, I was not aware of another court date, but there was one coming up and I missed it. <laughs> Like, because that, she didn't give me any paperwork. She didn't give me any documents to say, oh, there's a court date coming up at this date or whatever. So I was still uninformed. And honestly, at this point, I was so tired. I'm like, whatever happens, happens, okay? We got somebody telling me my door is gonna get kicked in, okay? We got this man messaging me, FaceTime my phone, telling me this person's coming for me and that person's coming for me and yada, 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 yada. Now we got randoms showing up at my house. This is hell. At this point, I'm like, I don't have the capacity even to like go to war right now. I, I don't care to battle this man. Like, I don't care to war with him. I don't have it in me. And so I'm just, I'm praying to God. Oh my God. This don't, this is not giving promises. <laughs> I'm like, God, this is not what you told me before I left. This is not what you told me. So either you ain't lead me here, which don't make no type of sense because the way that we got here was so crazy. Okay, either you ain't lead me here or you just need a little bit more time to do what you're doing. Okay, and I'm going to wait. Okay, I'm going to be patient and wait on the Lord, but baby, it's getting to down to the wire now. It's getting serious. You got these, these people got people showing up at my crib and it wasn't going to end there either. Okay, I can't give you guys a full story here. Okay, so we're going to slow it down a bit slow it down a bit so we can break this up into another story but or another part because honestly it's already the videos are already very long because yeah we're gonna have to break this down to another part a lot has happened like i'm telling you guys two months of information it's not even two months it's way more than two months of information i can't do it in one video i know you guys love the long videos girl but i've been missing from work for this entire month dealing with this kind of stuff so like i'm not just gonna come here and give you guys all of it in one shot though i know that's what you want it's not happening like that okay so especially because things have changed drastically drastically okay so i can't do that i'm upset but i'm not upset because i realized that god sent her so i was upset when she first showed up by the time she left i was in good spirits because i'm like wow god is really on my side okay who job less no mom cars okay so i'm like yeah yeah me love it <laughs> me love it at this point i'm like shout out to god very much impressed but still kind of like that was needed in that moment but clearly this thing is far from over and obviously i'm not willing to live my life like this you know what i mean like i'm not willing to live my life in this way where i'm going through the ringer with this person forever and ever and ever but i also know that they made a vow to me and the devil to not leave me alone as long as this situation exists so decisions have to be made maybe some that i don't want to make kind of where we're heading right he told me 
that he would make my life a living hell. He's done that. Congratulations, you've done that. Uh, after she showed up, like I said, I missed a court date. And when I missed that court date, baby, that was not the court date to miss. No, it was not. Because the thing was, she was on assignment to come and take my kids and got here and realized she can't take these kids. She went and reported back and did whatever she needed to do. But then I started getting promptings and warnings again that my ex is popping up. And so court happens, I miss court not a good look for mom again let me go spray my face put on my lashes and then we can finish up this video because we're, we're, we're doing a lot so when i missed court on the 20 something of july they ruled that either the child protective services office of the children's advocate or the police should be removing the children from me to give temporary custody to their father who was going to stay in an airbnb with the kids until the situation was officially uh handled i guess i don't even know where i was at in the story but there's still so much more story to go anyway so if you don't hear it in this video you hear it in another one since the matter is in court and obviously i don't want to give the ops any ideas okay i'm not going to say too much <laughs> which is why a big chunk of this video is missing because my lawyer called me while uh we were filming but i think where we left off was me saying how they gave him temporary custody despite the fact that he doesn't live here so that was very stupid but they gave him temporary custody because i didn't show up at court but they also adjourned the court matter to another day now upon that happening one tuesday afternoon august 13th 2024 okay so not too long ago i got a phone call mind you obviously i'm hearing rumors okay I'm hearing rumors people are messaging me and saying this and this and this is being said about you online right that the Jamaican authorities are coming for me the also my ex is reaching out and telling me the same thing because he's the one that's putting the information online <laughs> he's the one that's putting the information online saying that the Jamaican authorities are coming for your girl now he already told us that Canada is out to get me okay he already sent me one dollar told me that RCMP is coming Okay, so at this point, I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't. Scare tactics, especially where Jamaica was concerned. The one thing about Jamaica is, if you don't know Jamaica, baby, you just don't know Jamaica. Until you live a yard, you don't understand yard. Me being here for as long as I have, I have unlearned what I thought I knew about Jamaica and have learned what Jamaica really is and what type of time they're on. Yeah. And you got to be more careful. So... Like I said, I'm hearing, he's telling me, I got custody in Canada and Jamaica. What you gonna do about it? That's what he said to me. <laughs> he said, what's your plan? I said, the Lord. Actually, I never responded, but I said, my plan is in the Lord's hands. I don't have a plan. So that happened. I don't remember what day that was, but that happened. It was a text message. Once again, sent a cropped um, document. And the reason he's sending a cropped document is because he does not want me to know there's another court date right he doesn't want me to know that he wants me to be stupid and you know he wants me to be surprised but i got a phone call on august 13th and the phone call was from one of the agencies that protect children so there's two agencies in jamaica pretty much sworn to protect children and that's Child Protective Services, and then there's the Office of the Child Advocate. And so I get a call, and on this day in particular, the lady calls me and she says that her lawyer will be contacting me, but um, she tells me if there is a court date, that it will not be to remove my children from my care, but to further secure us here in the country. Now, we're citizens, so I didn't really understand what she meant by further secure us, but I think you just meant to like wrap up the court case unbeknownst to me um one of the agencies actually filed a petition 
for my children to remain in Jamaica safe and sound. I didn't know this until Friday, last Friday. So, so Tuesday, August 13th, I get a phone call and I'm like, this is great. So I am, for the first time in two years, pretty much, able to breathe. I had not breathed, I had not breathed, you guys. Like, I had not breathed. <laughs> so for the first time in two years, I'm like, oh my God, it's finally over. I can move on with my life. My children and I can move on with our lives. Like, there's no more of this foolishness. Jamaica has made their decision and it's wonderful, right? Mind you, at that point, I had not been to court. And the crazy part is, God told me it wasn't gonna be handled carnally, so there was that as well but that's neither here nor there he said this is not a carnal matter so it would not be handled carnally that's what he told me and so this entire time i'm like what well, i said lord it's getting thick out here <laughs> i don't know what to do i don't know what moves to make um help a little help here jesus so I'm sat there and I'm like relieved. And so I'm celebrating. I didn't make beignets, okay? I made beignets and I was eating the beignets in, in just sheer happiness. You know in the Bible, like the Israelites, how they're always having like these festivals and feasts? <laughs> That's what it was giving, okay? We are celebrating, okay? I had popped one of my bottles that I had shipped from um, Canada. I was, I have my sangria. Y'all know I love the yellow tail, yellow, yellow tail sangria, but I have it on reserve, okay? I don't open it for just anything because I can't be running out of the bottles right so I popped one open I'm happy I'm celebrating girl Tuesday good day there's Wednesday good day Thursday rolls around <laughs> and it's still a good day it was Thursday was a good day but then another song happened yeah and when it happened I was shook to my core I said what is this Lord I have a voice note and I'll play it for you guys uh oh I left my phone so Thursday so the what was that the 15th of August rolls around and I'm minding my black business I grab my anointing oil to do my house and all of a sudden out of nowhere literally out of nowhere I start singing the CSI theme song girl what I'm like I said oh no 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 what is this and so here's the voice note I sent to my sister on that day and this is what I mean by you cannot make this up and the Lord is leading me. He tell me everything, child. He might not tell me exactly what it is, but he gonna tell me something. Okay, so I have the screenshot so I can insert the screenshot because I actually text as well and says songs never play for no reason, okay? So this is the, the, the voice note I sent on Thursday. What time was it? 7.28 p.m., okay? Okay, let's see. I don't know what's happening, but I was just minding my business, and God started playing the CSI theme song in my spirit. And I just like I was just randomly sat, standing here, and I went and stopped in my tracks. <sighs> Ciao. Ciao. Okay. So that's Thursday. So I'm feeling great anyway because I got a phone call on Tuesday that changed the game. So I'm lit, right? I'm hype. I'm happier than I've ever been. I am like ecstatic. I, I was on this, I was on cloud nine. I kept telling my mom, I'm on literal cloud nine. Like I'm just soaking this all in and processing it because God told me it's not going to be handled carnally and it wasn't handled carnally. Like how did, how did God do, how did you pull this one off me guy? So. I was actually gonna film on Monday, but I decided I was gonna film Friday instead. Well, I started doing my makeup, and I was actually still waiting for the lawyer to call me, because remember the lady from the agency told me her lawyer is gonna contact me and give me more information, right? And so I'm waiting for this phone call to come through. The phone call never comes, so I think on Wednesday or Thursday I asked for a, a follow-up, I said she never called me yet when's she gonna call me still never called so she ends up having to go to sweden so now she's out of the country nobody can reach her okay they said this lady's on an airplane i said what the hell but that wasn't until friday afternoon so i'm sitting here filming okay not filming i'm sitting here getting ready to film i get this phone call from a jamaican number so i answer it thinking it's the lawyer finally calling me okay i thought i'm chipper as 
cheap as hell. <laughs> I'm cheaper, okay? So I answer it, and it's the office of the child advocate, and I'm confused. I said, no, there must be a misunderstanding here, because I was told just like two days ago or three days ago that everything was wrapped up. Signed, sealed, delivered, ready to go, okay? Everything was it was done with. So I'm not sure why you're calling me. I, I said, I'm, you must have got the file on your desk a little late, but we Gucci. <laughs> okay? I'm like... I'm like, no, 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 something's not right here. That happened. And I, I am feeling like, what in the literal hell? Confusion galore. Like, I'm just like, confusion don't come from God. So what is this? How is this lady calling me on Tuesday telling me we straight? And then this lady's not calling me on Friday? As the CSI theme song then played. Like, one plus one's not equaling two. I need answers, God. So I'm like trying to figure out what is happening. So I get off the phone with this lady from the office of the child advocate because she's pretty much telling me she's supposed to come to my house and investigate. I said, what well, y'all, the other agency already came and investigated. What are you talking about? And I said, I was told that if there's going to be a court date that it wouldn't be for X, Y, and Z, it would be for this. And she's like, who told you that? And I said, the lady from the other agency, she's, her lawyer's supposed to call me and give me more details, but she never got around to calling me. So I don't know if you're just not getting the, the information correctly, correct, but that's just what she said. So she's like, she couldn't have told you that, ma'am, because there's a court date coming up on the uh, 27th of August. I said, hey, I said, no, no, no. She told me if there's a court date, what it would be for. She never told me there was one and that I needed to be there. She said, no, no, no. So now I'm like, what the frick? So I call the other lady back and I said, excuse me, ma'am, you gave me wrong information or what? Okay, and a lot of this I have recorded because I was sat in front of my camera getting ready. So I just kept pressing record when I was on the phone with people because I'm just like, y'all, if I got to get to sue with somebody, <laughs> y'all better get it right. Okay, because y'all are doing too much. Y'all are very confused. Y'all are playing with mine and my kids' lives. So what is really good? So I'm like, this is crazy. What is happening? Anyway, push comes to shove. I end up calling the lady back and we can't reach the lawyer lady because the lawyer lady, like I said, gone to Sweden. So for an emergency kind of conference thing. So I'm like, this is all bad news bears. And now I'm trying to reprocess. And I sit, so when I'm sat there, I'm like, no, 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 no. When I was on cloud nine, I kept, feeling like this is too good to be true and whatever, whatever but I'm just like no because I know God and I know how God shows up for me so I'm like no it's not too good to be true the devil is a liar baby they gagged me on that Friday afternoon but like I said if a song plays within 24 hours I'm gonna get my answer so the lady on the phone that day for the office of the child advocate baby that was an insane phone call and it did not end well they actually had to remove her and put two new people on to the file, okay? Because she was a psychopath. All I did was ask her one question and she flipped ish, okay? And I have it recorded where she's just flip, flying off the handle because I was told by another agency to verify who she was. Because how did she get my phone number? Which we uncovered that after the fact right but that situation was like crazy and so she was removed two new people got put on so that they could come and do their investigation and so the following day the office of the child advocate came to my home so now I've had two different agencies come into my house take statements interview my kids um Take pictures of my home. Take pictures of my kid's bedroom and the bathroom. It, look in my fridge. Verify that there's a whole bunch of food up in here. And was and is. Okay, so it's good that they didn't come the time that I was supposed to go to the grocery store. I was like, I can't go to the grocery store. <laughs> Maybe the fruit was empty. Okay, girl. Do you know how, do you know how, like, as a mother, to have people come into your space to verify that your living condition is 
and we're in Jamaica, so like like a lot of people are impoverished. So like when they go to investigate certain homes, well, th these situations are not really normal. Like people are not really calling those types of agencies in Jamaica unless it's like a super emergency. Our situation is deemed an emergency. So they came, they inspected, but they even said, you know, most people are poor. So they said we're poor is what they said. And so from they get to the com from they get to the entry of the home, like where the gate is, they already know they're not gonna come and see like crazy living conditions. So it was silly to begin with, but they literally inspected my home, made sure it was safe and blah 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 blah. And just checking on us because the other thing is my ex is saying that I'm damn suicidal and I'm just like what? Who told you that, sir? <laughs> Who told you that? So, say, just, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. So, so they came, and as a mom, for that, like, it's, it's not humiliating, but it's, mm, when I think of a word to describe how I was feeling in those moments, like, it was the same feeling I had when CAS called me in Canada, but, like, to actually have people come to my house, I felt like I was watching it out of body right and they're interviewing me and you know taking statements for me and it was just so like and my kids are obviously like who the hell are these people up in our house like what because we like they know our neighbors because you know we interact with our neighbors and stuff and like they have their friends and those types of, and those people can come over but to have these random people coming over and you know at certain points we would have to talk in code my kids know certain things but they don't know everything right so there's a way that i would have to be relaying what i'm trying to say to the investigator without calling names or without or i would spell stuff out to the lady so that she could take my statement or whatever but like that was a lot and um that happened and obviously it didn't end there and so you know at that point i was strongly told to get a lawyer and I was very against this because I have no faith in the justice system obviously and you know the lawyers that I've had in the past no bueno so I've had two lawyers right so first one Robin Blind girl that's gonna be a story time so we'll talk about that on a different video but the second lawyer she wasn't around for more than a month because I asked her at that time to I waved the white flag and said, I give up, you know? That was the April 6th situation. I told that lawyer to tell his Canadian lawyer at the time, I ain't fighting this man. If they're saying it's an emergency and they need to come and get the kids, come and get the kids. Because I knew that if I didn't do that, I was gonna have legal ramifications. I already knew, I foresaw everything. I already knew he was gonna go and do whatever he did and say I kidnapped them and all kinds of crazy stuff. And obviously, I can't provide for my kids if I'm sitting behind bars, right? Did I take a risk coming to Jamaica, not knowing the first thing about anything? Of course I did, but it was for my own good and for their good and our safety, and that was the bottom line. So, at that point, I was just like, okay, you know what? I give up. I'm not. I'm not gonna go any further with this. But they said no on April 6th. And I wasn't going to argue with nobody because at that point, I'm like, listen, if y'all not going to come get them and you're saying it's an emergency, then clearly it's not an emergency. Clearly it's not an emergency. Okay, so I'm just like, mm, all right, you're, you're lost because it would have been resolved back then. What would I have done? Don't, I don't know. I don't know, right? But I was very weak at that point. And I'm going to say wasn't fully trusting God at that point either. And so... I just didn't want to be in trouble because I, I saw where it was heading and it had there. It did. Literally, if he came on April 6, 2023, like I said, this is literally like a week and a half after we got to Jamaica. I got here on the March 23rd, right? So April 6 rolls around. If they had come and got the children at that point, we wouldn't be sit I wouldn't be sitting and telling you guys this situation. It would have never got this far. There was no legal stuff. I could have flown back and forth to Canada if I wanted to at that point. Like it wouldn't have been anything, right? But that's not how it went, okay? <laughs> because my life does not go in any normal direction. So, you know, fast forward to present day and they 
like tell me to get a lawyer oh when they leave my house they tell me they call me and they're like get a lawyer please get a lawyer they beg me to get a lawyer okay after they came into their investigation they begged me to get a lawyer and so what does bougie do bougie gets a lawyer did i want to get a lawyer absolutely not i do not want to funnel money into the system okay i don't want to do it it's i'm doing it against my will <laughs> I, i'm not interested in it i'm not interested in fighting i like peace i like happiness i like palm trees okay um and so i had to get a lawyer and so i'm gonna conclude the video here the next part of the story which is after I get the lawyer and sign my first affidavit and have my first court hearing where I actually show up in person. I had to bring my kids to court, which I did, and all those things. And we'll detail out those things. And I'm going to bring you guys back to another affidavit that I have been dying to talk about for so damn long. And a few other ones, actually. I'm going to let y'all see the full scope of how things have gone and all the stuff that I don't talk about because it's none of y'all business but if I gotta pay these legal fees now baby y'all getting this content <laughs> but I'm gonna be careful about what I tell you because obviously anything that I say they are they are scouring hey lawyer lady my, by the way she looks like the girl from the restaurant in 2020 that he cheated with that's what his lawyer looks like which I was cackling okay but that's neither here nor there the fact of the matter is court was insane okay from the time i got there on tuesday morning insanity okay because there's actually a judicial holiday right now there's not supposed to be having any court held so it was actually insane that we even ended up at court but i have a lot to say i have i was even in there taking notes and writing down what was happening i needed to take the minutes because i said no no this is insane okay so for the time i got there it was warfare warfare but yeah so i have a lawyer it is going to trial it's going to trial in march of 2025 but it's actually not going to end up going to trial so we will talk about that in another video i don't know when i'm going to get to film the next part of this so i hope that this holds you guys for at least you know at least three days or so let me see i know i'm not gonna get to film tomorrow i'm definitely not filming on the sabbath i'm not gonna film on sunday in the week god's willing okay i love you all so much thank you so much for watching this video i'm happy to be back in front of you and i will definitely see you in the next one